Hello, I'm Linda Kincaid. Good to have you with us. Ukrainian defense officials say Moscow is so afraid of defeat, it's taking a move right out of Hitler's playbook. As Ukrainian forces push Russian troops out of more territory, several Russian-occupied regions have announced they'll hold referendums on Russian citizenship starting this Friday. They've scheduled them in Kherson, also in the areas of Zaporizhia under Russian control, and in the self-declared republics of Luhansk and Donetsk. These regions make up about 15 percent of Ukrainian territory, a landmass about the size of Hungary or Portugal. Russia's foreign minister says this is simply democracy. From the very beginning of the special military operation and before it, we've been saying that the peoples of the respective territories should decide their own fate. The whole current situation confirms that they want to be master of their own fate. Ukrainian officials are condemning the referendum, saying they are a sham and will have no legal consequence. U.S. allies agree. This is uh, simply an information operation that's meant to distract from the uh, difficult state that the Russian military currently finds itself in right now. Uh, but no one will view uh, such sham referenda with any credibility, and the U.S. certainly will not recognize uh, the outcome of any sham uh, elections. Well, I want to bring in our Ben Wiedemann, who joins us from Kharkiv, and Matthew Chance in London. Good to have you both with us. I'll start with you first, Ben, uh, because as Russia loses significant territory in Ukraine, uh, there are areas still under occupation that will hold these referendums from this Friday. Uh, Ukraine says this comes, uh, this move coming from a fear of defeat. How will this play out, and what will it look like if these votes are taken at face value? Well, basically, the voting will begin on the 23rd of September, go to the 27th in these four different regions. And uh, we've seen this sort of thing before. They held a referendum in Crimea after Russian troops went in, and 97 percent of the population, according to the Russians, uh, voted in favor of joining Russia. Now, how is this going to change the situation around uh, on the ground? It could be significant, because if they vote in favor, and I don't think anybody doubts that they won't, in favor of joining uh, Russia, and the Russians accept that, and all indications are they will, the areas that are currently battlefields in this war will become part of Russia. Until now, for instance, the Luhansk and Donetsk uh, People's Republics are independent republics only recognized by Russia and Syria, but then it will be a war on Russian soil as far as the Russians concerned. Now, we heard, for instance, uh, Jake Sullivan, the U.S. National Security Advisor, uh, say that the Russians could be moving toward mobilization. In other words, what until now has been called by the Russians a special military operation uh, in which only volunteers can be brought uh, to the front. This could mean that conscripts could be brought into the battle. Now, Matthew can probably speak more to the complications that might result uh, for Moscow, but it certainly would change the tone of this war. And some people believe that if it is officially a war for the Russians as opposed to a special military operation, some of the weaponry that we have not seen uh, so far used by the Russians could come out. Yeah, Ben, if you could stand by for us, I do want to ask Matthew about Russia's depleted forces in Ukraine, uh, because in recent months we have seen Russia look to prisons to recruit people. Uh, but now uh, Russia is looking at punishment for those uh, that I think they're suggesting violate uh, vi for a violation of military service like uh, desertion. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the Russian parliament, the Duma, has, um, has been discussing a couple of amendments to uh, the, the, serv the military service laws in Russia, which would do a couple of things. One of them sort of makes it a much more serious criminal offence to avoid military service if you're called up, for instance, as a conscript. I mean, when uh, conscripts are, are, are called up, you know, lots of people do whatever they can to try and avoid that. If there's an ongoing conflict underway, I expect those efforts not to serve will be... Uh, you know, really redoubled. And so they're increasing the prison sentence to 15 years if you avoid um, military service 
um, in that way. Uh, they're also, I think, you know, changing the legislation to enable foreigners to become Russian citizens uh, uh, via a fast track by joining the military. And so they're opening up that opportunity as well. And there could well be some takers uh, when it comes to people who, who em emigrate to, to Russia, particularly from Central Asian states, that may want to take up that offer of getting Russian citizenship if they serve in the military. So these are all efforts that they're, uh, they're going to to try and boost the number of forces that uh, Russia uh, can bring to the field um, a, as this war continues. But of course, the big news is the fact, as Ben was saying, uh, that you know, these four regions uh, have announced that they will be holding referendum. That's Donetsk and Luhansk um, uh, regions, and Zaporizhia and Kherson as well. Um, they will, if that goes ahead, as it looks like they will, they'll almost certainly be absorbed very quickly into the Russian state. And that's significant because for two reasons. First of all, it potentially changes the calculus uh, of Ukraine and of its Western backers. They'll no longer be fighting a defensive war as far as Russia is concerned, but Russia would regard it, as Ben was saying, as a war against uh, the motherland. And so it, it could potentially raise the threat of, of, of more escalation, more serious weapons, possibly even the nuclear threat uh, could be raised as well. But it's also important for Putin domestically as well, because at the moment, Russian law does not allow for instance, conscripts to be sent into foreign wars. But it does allow them uh, to be able to fight to defend the motherland. And if these territories are absorbed into the motherland, as far as Russia's law is concerned, you know, that, that's uh, the opportunity that Putin might need to bolster his forces in the war zone. Yeah, an interesting strategic move, Matthew. I want to go back to Ben to get a sense of the momentum right now on the battlefield, because we have seen a number of strikes on Ukrainian infrastructure, including that power plant in the south. Uh, what more can you tell us? Well, this seems to be a pattern that's been certainly accelerated uh, since uh, this, uh, this counteroffensive took place in the Kharkiv region. Here in Kharkiv, the Russians uh, hit the power system, knocking out electricity uh, for quite some time here. Uh, they've hit, uh, they, were, they hit very close, 300 meters from the South Ukraine nuclear power plant, which is about uh, 900 kilometers to the west of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, which has also been the scene uh, of some fighting. And uh, the, we, we've heard President Zelensky say time and time again that they need air defense systems to pri prevent this sort of thing. Uh, but as far as the battle is going in the eastern part of the country, it's a mixed picture. The Ukrainians are now making slower progress. Uh, they, to, they say they've taken the town of Bilohorivska, which is not far from Lysychansk, which was a city taken by the Russians in July. But just 40 kilometers to the southwest, the Ukrainian-held city of Bakhmut is under intense bombardment by the Russians, who are pushing an offensive there. So it's not all rosy for the Ukrainians at the moment, and it does appear that They've slowed down this counteroffensive, which is normal. Troops need to rest. Equipment needs to be repaired and maintained. But uh, I don't think in the coming weeks we're going to see the dramatic, kind of dramatic uh, progress by Ukrainian forces that we saw in the first two weeks of September. Linda. All right. We will be watching closely. Good to have you there on the ground for us. Al Ben Wiedemann in Kharkiv and Matthew Chansforth in London. Thanks very much.